Hey, everybody. My name is Axel Villamil. We're here on 24 Shades of Blue with the amazing Richard Harris, who is the acting inspector for the Hold Up Squad. Rich, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And I love the intro. Thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. I mean, it's a pleasure uh, to have you here. Obviously, it would be even better for in person. You know, we're back to quarantine and, and isolation, but that's okay. You know, uh, better safe than sorry. And uh, I think you have a lot of uh, understanding on what better safe than sorry is in your position. So, you know, I want to talk about, first off, the holdup squad. What, what kind of cases do you handle? Okay, so the holdup squad um, is mandated to actually investigate citywide uh, robberies. We do... Um, Retail robberies, financial institution robberies, home invasion robberies, uh, carjackings, uh, armored car robberies, um, anywhere where offensive weapons are used as well. So um, it's citywide, and we also work quite extensively with um, with neighboring police services, Durham, York, Peel, um, basically wherever the evidence takes us, we go. Wow. So it sounds like it, it's, you know, you aren't really subject to one area as, as wherever that evidence goes, you're just going anywhere and everywhere to make sure that, you know, you handle that case. Um, I feel like not only is that a lot of work, but it must be taxing on on the team, um, you know, just getting down to it. But um, I feel like what else is taxing is, you know, not just, I guess, the crime itself, but you're probably also working with a lot of the victims. And when we hear Hold Up Squad, just to confirm everybody for listeners, obviously, there's the armored cars and, you know, the big bank robberies and things like that. But, you know, from what I understand, it's those home invasions or things like that when they're not even home. Um, and it's the aftermath of being felt like you, you've been, you know, violated in, in your place that you feel comfortable. How do you how do you deal with those victims, Rich? Absolutely. It's one of the most intrusive things that could actually happen to a person, uh, whether it be a home invasion or uh, the employee that's working at uh, any retail store, any given retail store. You, you often hear the term that the robbery took place and uh, there were no injuries. But uh Every single member of the whole of squad takes into account the uh, the psychological impact that this has on uh, of victims. So you may not see the you know what's sensationalized in Hollywood uh, these all these takeover style very extremely violent robberies. Although we do investigate those um, unfortunately far too often, um, the, this, it takes the same toll on the person where no physical force is uh, inflicted, but. Uh, you got to take into account the psychological impact and every single investigator in the whole squad um, is really driven by that. Uh, we try to do our best and leave no rock unturned when it comes to uh, solving the cases uh, that we're investigating. Could you describe, you know, some of what, I mean, I, you're, you're there on the ground and obviously the victims have the best um, understanding of what that feels like, but from your perspective, with all your experience, what, what exactly is that feeling like for you, you know, to be, um, rob per se, uh, whether there are no injuries or there are injuries, what is that feeling uh, that can be described to you know our listeners? Because I actually just had a run and my mom messaged me. And, you know, mom, she goes, make sure you don't have your car running. Her, her co-worker um, at her work uh, just got her, her Ben stolen um, because of um, you know a, a signal catch or, or whatever the, the term is uh, in terms of grabbing the signal from the car and just took off with the Ben. So, you know, what exactly does that feel like? I have, you know, fortunately never been in that situation. So I want our listeners to kind of get in the heads of, of, of our victims. Well, I mean, it's, um, it's quite traumatic quite often. And uh, just, you know, the sense of loss of something that you've worked so hard for uh, just being taken from you is, uh, you know, one thing. But actually being uh, present and during, during the course of the robberies that take place, um, I couldn't imagine. We, we can only imagine and try and put ourselves in the shoes of the victims um, from their perspective. And we have great working relationships with uh, victim services. And that's one of the most important things uh, for us to ensure that, uh, you know, the, the well-being of the victim is taken care of uh, throughout the court process and even after. Personally, myself, I speak to victims of crimes that I've investigated uh, from time to time just to see how they are doing as well. That's beautiful. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad you do that because, you know, after going through that type of situation, um, you don't know really, is, well, where do you go? Where do you, who do you talk to? And having you do that, you know, actively, proactively is, is, is beautiful to hear. So now when you're in this situation and you, you hear that, okay, we have a case, what's the first steps in addressing that case? Like what goes through your mind and, and your team's mind? Well, usually the cases that we investigate is uh, it starts with uh, the extremely capable um, uniformed officers that get to the scene first. Now they do ext like 
outstanding work um, in terms of, you know, getting the initial story from the victim, ensuring the scene is uh, held for, you know, examination. Um, usually a forensic officer will come to the scene or a scene's a crimes officer uh, to collect any sort of physical or forensic evidence, which will start our investigation. Um, from there, and I'm just giving you a, a, a generic case from there what will happen is we will and this world is so digitized so uh so we would canvas for video um not just at the scene but surrounding areas and together we try to piece together what took place and what took place after from there with all our um our clues i'll call it um we have an excellent analytical team who will basically take a look at what we're what we're dealing with and be able to compare it to other scenes other crimes outside of our jurisdiction we have excellent working relationships like i mentioned earlier uh, and compare notes for lack of a better term and that allows us to get ahead of the game and uh, be able to have an extremely uh, good head start on most of our investigations and fortunate to have members of the community that come forward as well um, and provide it provide information either through Crime Stoppers or witness statements. Um, and as I mentioned, it's, things are so digital digital these days. Um, dash cam footage is also a very important uh, tool that we like to use and assist in many of our investigations. Wow. Yeah. See, now you have reminded me that I need to get a dash cam <laughs> for my car. I, uh, I've been meaning to get one for a while. So thanks for the reminder. Um, okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about a situation right now. Let's say... And for everybody listening, Rich is my conscious right now. Um, I am in a situation of a robbery. Let's say it's something as simple, Rich, I'm on the street um, late at night and somebody, uh, and this is scenario number one, we're going to have a little fun. Um, scenario number one, I'm on the street and I'm about to get mugged. Um, what would you tell me in my mind, Rich, as my conscious? Well, what's, what should I do in this situation? When you're facing the situation, what am I going to do? I, I, I mean, in generic terms, the best I would say is um, don't resist. You know what I mean? It's uh, m quite often they're material things uh, and the loss, although it's, you know, something that may be near and dear to you, it's, it's a lot better to lose something that's um, tangible instead of, you know, getting inflicted with some sort of injury. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever way you want to look at it, sometimes people do um, do not comply, and they get involved in, uh, and sometimes it results, unfortunately, in people getting injured. So, I mean, my my message would be, please just comply, and uh, and then let let investigators take over from there, because public safety is number one. Uh, we do not like to see anyone experience some sort of physical injury, and we understand there's psychological impacts, but we don't want you to be physically injured as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, obviously, in that, that type of stressful situation, I mean, you're all trained to kind of be thinking in, in, in stressful situations when we're in shock, it must be, you know, really tough to even figure out what to say, what to do. But you're right, it's, it's comply, comply, comply. And like my dad always said, absolutely, because <laughs> he said this in a situation He's like, if you ever get, you know, robbed, he's like, you can always replace that you can't replace yourself. So completely agree. Well, this um, is right. Exactly. Now, the other spectrum, and <laughs> I'll let my dad know that you said that in terms of the, the, the far, you know, crazier situation, let's say, you know, and God forbid I'm in a, a brink in a bank robbery and, you know, I'm one of those people. What also would you suggest in that other than to comply, you know, is it just staying calm, things like that? Like, obviously, I'm sure a lot of those suggestions you made would transfer, but would love your thought on that situation too. The sooner that that person is out of the premise, the better. Um, and it decreases the likelihood of some sort of physical injury taking place. Um, that's, a, I mean, it, it would translate from being on the, on the street, having, being robbed, uh, into, uh, any retail or financial institution, just, uh, just comply. It's, uh, it's always better and we will do our best in, in terms of trying to solve those, uh, those crimes. So, um, when it comes to, let's say not now we're in the situation of, trying to prevent all this in the first place what are some preventative measures we can actually do with people you know taking their belongings or valuables like what are some let's say you know our average uh, average joe walking the street or things with your car what are some things we can do i would try to always be aware of your surroundings always try to look for lit areas obviously um and even with stores signage that blocks the uh the windows 
uh, try and remove those so that there's a clear view to outside. Um, like I, I said, uh, often you have citizens that do uh, call in and uh, they're excellent witnesses. Um, and it alleviates, you know, that sort of disguise that uh, persons that would be going into, a, let's say, a retail establishment, uh, it, it alleviates them from being uh, not, not detected, really. You know what I mean? Give, give, give them a chance to be seen. So, I mean, don't block your windows. Be aware of your surroundings. The same thing with your vehicles or even if you're selling something on Kijiji, be it, make it a public place um, where there are witnesses and it will lessen the likelihood of unfortunate things taking place. Great, great points on preventative measures, Rich. So my next question actually is getting in the minds of uh, these robbers. Uh, what are what are the motivations uh, behind these robberies? I would say the vast majority of the, the robberies that we investigate, uh, it's financial gain. Uh, it doesn't matter what, um, whether it be a retail, obviously a bank is financial. Um, the, the, the end game is financial gain. Um, we have seen instances where um, it can be a form of initiation for younger gang members wanting to get into uh, that that lifestyle. Um, but I would say the vast majority obviously is financial gain. Um, we've had pharmacy robberies where the targeted commodity was narcotics, but that also translates to financial gain because they're resold um, after. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, lots of, uh, lots of different ways, um, but I, I totally get it in terms of financial gain. Some people are either going through it or they're just doing it in the wrong way. Um, now, I kind of want to go into you, Rich. I feel like every person, and, and especially in, in your role, is what's your case? What, what's the case that really stuck with you? Is there anything that you have are always remembering or thinking of in terms of either it was um, something that just very su surprised you in your career as working with the Holdup Squad? Yeah, it, and it seems like when you speak to every member, they, there's that one case or two cases that they really hold on to and continually tell stories about or or think about quite often. Um, for me, it was the robbery um, back in 2009 that took place in the east end of uh, Toronto. And, um, and remember earlier, I mentioned uh, just comply. Well, this was a case where um, the owner of the, the premise didn't. Uh, for whatever reasons, and decided to uh, resist uh, the demands uh, made by the two, well, at the time, two suspects. Um, there was quite a bit of a struggle, a violent struggle that took place, and unfortunately, um, the victim ended up uh, being shot. Um, as a result, had some really lifelong, uh, to this day, side effects as, as, a, result of be, as a result of being shot. Um, but that was one of the cases, and you see on TV that most cases are... Uh, you know, wrapped up in 45 minutes. This actually was a four year investigation, uh, one that I just couldn't let go. And, uh, and I, and I speak on behalf of every member of the whole of squad where they just can't let cases go. And, um, it's our goal to leave no rock unturned and basically put the best case before the courts. So like I mentioned, this was in 2009 and it wasn't until, um, later 2012 that we were able to make arrests of the individuals involved. And, um, and, um, they were convicted for uh, this extremely violent event. Wow. Four years, Rich. Uh, that's a long time to work on something. And I, I kind of wanted to ask you, why can't, why can't you let go? You know, in terms of like you and your team, what, it, what is that thing that drives you all to work so hard on something? And especially for four years, you know, I've, I've done it with businesses. I've done it with other pieces of creative that I've done, which have taken sometimes years to make. And I know why I do it, but I kind of want to know, was it that makes you all tick to do this? I think it's just the, the drive. There's so many, there's so many, well, reasons, but I mean, the, the drive and the desire, when you put yourself in the foot, in the, in the foot, in the shoes of that person who, uh, you know, was working so hard. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, to have their livelihood robbed, um, their, you know, their way of life is changed forever. Um, we put our hands up to do everything we can uh, for those who can't help themselves. So, um, and that goes for pretty well across across the board, but with specifically the Hold of Squad, uh, that's the mindset and the mentality. Um, we're driven to, uh, you know, do our part in making sure the community stays safe. And uh, it's that, it's that mindset uh, that goes into every case. It doesn't matter if it's, um, you know, 
something minor in nature or something as drastically violent as that. Um, that's the mindset. I, I love that. I think that's just why, you know, it, it's this ecosystem between the police and the community, right? And sometimes it's never perfect, but they need each other. And that's the the the, the wonderful part that, yes, you know, when push comes to shove, there may be some thoughts in between the community and the police, but when it comes to actually it goes down to it, that how much the community helps, you know, the organizations like TPS and as well, you know, specifically, um, you know, your team at the holdup squad is, is just impeccable and vice versa. Your goals are to, you know, help the community. So I, I just love how that it's just this nice back and forth um, of, of what you do. Now, in terms of um, the holdup squad, let's, okay, this is the big question. We all, we, we all wanted to ask it. Hollywood. <laughs> What, what do you love and what do you hate about it? That's you're either accurate or not accurate. I've seen, I love, I love me a good, I'm not going to lie, a great bank robbing movie. I love it. Um, I was a huge Ocean's Eleven fan. <laughs> the whole series, I don't care what anybody says. What are your thoughts on, you know, movies like that and and um, what is accurate, what's not accurate? Well, just from the stars, obviously sensationalized uh, in Hollywood, Um but you think back to the times when I was a kid, you know, all you wanted to do is, you know, for me, anyways, uh, you play policeman uh, or police person. And uh, and one of the games, obviously, was cops and robbers. Unfortunately, I wish it stayed a game, but it's, uh, it's a harsh reality. Unfortunately, it's still, it takes place today. Um, but in terms of, you know, some of the sensationalized stuff that you see on TV, we haven't experienced it, thankfully. Um, there have been some really, really high profile, violent, uh, violent robberies that the whole squad has investigated. But um, thankfully, it doesn't turn out to like I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning the scene of heat. Uh, thankfully, we've never we've never had a, to experience something like that. We have investigated. Uh, we have investigated some armored car robberies um, that seem pretty sensationalized in uh, shows like um, uh, The Town. Great movie, by the way. But uh, that's an entertainment factor, and the reality is, uh, fortunately, those don't happen. To, those don't happen um, too frequently. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they don't. I feel like to rob an armored car, you have to have some some type of confidence, and something's going on. That's <laughs> is it. Does it happen more than we think? Well, I'm just trying to think back to the numbers. Um, we had we had a really a really violent takeover one I can recall in 2011, uh, which ended successfully, and uh, all those that were involved were arrested and convicted. Um, we've had uh, unfortunately one that remains under investigation, one that's before the courts uh, in 2021. And again, they were um, not quite like what you see in Hollywood, um, but uh, they were definitely violent um, armed suspects takeover style. Um, kind of robberies. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get much worse than that other than uh, someone being subject subjected to extreme violence uh, physically. Uh, these are uh, these are some of the most serious cases that we investigate. Do you still watch bank robbery movies <laughs> when you come home after work? Or uh, are you just saying this is too much like work and I'm just trying to rest? <laughs> no, well, every once in a while, like I, I got to admit, um, I do watch them every once in a while. Um, Heat was one of my favorite movies uh, even before I became a holdup investigator. It, I'm kind of an Al Pacino fan, but uh, um, not particularly. No, not particularly. As we close this off, Rich, is there anything you want to say to um, the community um, and all our listeners about the holdup squad? Anything you'd like to tell them? Um, and any maybe last words? Quite often, we don't have the opportunity to recognize uh you know, the community and the, the help that they really do um, in solving these cases. Um, recently, I just uh, signed off on some paperwork in recognition of uh, a citizen. Now, we never would suggest that a citizen intervene during the course of a robbery, but uh, there are a few that, you know, go above and beyond. Apart from, you know, the, the excellent help that we get in terms of uh, crime stoppers or witnesses, uh, some do intervene. And um, there was one uh, in recent times an extremely violent uh, suspect uh, was held after a robbery by a citizen until the arrival of the police. And, uh, you know, that's above and beyond. It's uh, commendable. Um, and I just want to extend my thanks to the community for continuing to help us out. Um, quite frankly, I, I feel uh, they don't get recognized quite enough. And um, uh, on behalf of the whole squad, thank you for your continued assistance.
Thank you, Rich. Appreciate your time. Um, and again, just echoing what, what you said to the community member, I think the ongoing uh, support for each other is what we need to hear right now and see right now. So um, we love hearing that. Uh, Rich, thank you so much for your time. This was 24 Shades of Blue. We're out. <laughs>